And we're going to be first finding we have our uh, main page. And this is going to be um, the most basic things that we need to program. We can first find engine capacity. This is going to be where we define our displacement for our engine. Now, the hull tech is going to primarily be ran in a volumetric efficiency style calculation. So we know in a VE style calculation that we need to define the engine displacement because we need to define that volume that the air mass has to fill and that's how we can calculate and estimate our volumetric efficiency. So we need to make sure that this is defined right. You can see that right here it's entered in a default of 2000 cc. If you're not uh, familiar with working in cubic centimeter and you want to work in something like liter or cubic inches, if we go into the, uh, the rule ruler icon here. It's going to take, take us to the part. Let's go ahead and close this. It's going to take it to where we can change this. If we go to engine volume, drop down here, we can change it to liter or cubic inch. Let's just change it to liter for right now. Click OK. And if we jump back into that icon, we can see now it's displaying it in units of liters. So let's assume I have a 2.4 liter engine. So we'll update that. Next, I find my engine type and we can see we can choose from uh, four stroke, two stroke, or rotary. In this case, I'll choose four stroke. That's going to be most common. We're going to have to define the number of cylinders or the rotors next. In this case, it would be uh, a four cylinder engine. I'm going to be assuming I'm a four cylinder. So if you're a six cylinder, eight cylinder, 10 cylinder, 12 cylinder, you'd have to go ahead and enter the value here. Next, we see max cranking RPM, and we can see that it's showing here 380. Now, this is going to be defining where or what the hull tech should expect for a cranking RPM with the engine. So anything higher than 380, if it goes to 381 RPMs, it's going to assume that the engine has fired up and we're not going to be sourcing our cranking fuel table or our cranking spark timing table. And at that point, once it's exited this max cranking RPM of 380, we're going to be sourcing our post-start correction and then into our base or main spark timing and fuel tables. So uh, usually a value of 380 is sufficient. Typical cranking speed on most engines between 150 to 250 RPMs. So you'll be finding that that should be sufficient, um, but it, it could change based on your engine. Um, that's going to be something that you may have to look at. Next, we're going to be finding vehicle information. We see the VIN number here is able to be programmed. It's blank right now. We also can see the driver type or drive type is going to be uh, rear, front, or all-wheel drive. Let's assume I have a front-wheel drive application. I'll just change it there. Throttle limits. We're going to be seeing user demand min, user demand max. Now, the demand is going to be related to this zero demand. So our zero demand is going to be where we source our spark timing from when we're off the throttle. And we're going to be defining what it's going to think is off the throttle, so we're not on the throttle at all. Anything below a half percent TPS. Anything above that, it's going to be kicking out of this zero demand table. Anything below that, it'll source the value here. Now, we don't see a zero demand table in our fuel section here. We can enable it. We're going to be looking at how these zero demand tables work um, coming up in some videos, but this is going to be the area where to define where it's going to kick into the zero demand table. And we're going to be finding the user demand max. This is going to be our wide open throttle condition. So 99.5 will be uh, signifying that we're in a wide open throttle condition. We could change this maybe something like 95%. Uh, but that's going to be sufficient in that range of 95 to 99.5%.